quiet. Okay. Uh, this is an interview for the oral history program for the Latinos in Chicagoland in Northern Indiana class, taught by Professor Jason Ruiz. Today's date is April 1st, 2010. We're in South Bend, Indiana. The interviewer will be Tim Woodward, and I will be interviewing Guadalupe Ramirez. Uh, thank you very much, Lupita, for participating in our oral history project. Um, would you please state your full name, uh, date, and place of birth? Guadalupe Ramirez, 311-5A. Place of birth was uh, Brownsville, Texas. Okay, excellent. Um, so we're just gonna begin by talking about uh, your background. Um, why don't you just tell me a little bit, a bit about yourself, like where did you grow up? I grew up there in Brownsville, Texas uh, all my life. And then I got married in 91, February of 91, and we came down here. So my husband could come and work here because he used to work in the field here in uh, Michigan. So I said, well, let's go because there in Brownsville, there's hardly any jobs. So we came down here since 91. Okay. Um, what's your family like? My family in Texas, they're all over there in Texas. My mom and my dad, and I have five brothers. I'm the youngest of six. Um, my husband is here, my two uh, children, a 17-year-old son and a 14-year-old daughter. Okay. Um, and uh, what's your education been like? Oh, I... Um, did a CBA for one year here in South Bend. Don't remember the year, <laughs> it's been a while. And then I've been going to trainings or uh, like conferences, whatever is required for my job. For the job. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I'm interested in how you uh, began working at El Campito. Uh, like, how were you drawn here? Um, I've always enjoyed working with children. That was my dream, to work with children. And I just heard about Campito, and then uh, I had been volunteering for my son's Head Start program when mm -hmm. he used to go there. So I brought that uh, certificate that I had been a volunteer there, and that's how I got hired after that. And, um, I don't remember the year, but it's been 11 years that okay. I've been working here. <laughs> um, what does your day-to-day -day job consist of? My day-to-day -day is, I do a program called Parents as Teachers. It's that um, we go out to their homes and they're the primary uh, teachers, but we take an activity it depends on the age of the child, and we give them like handouts, we help them with whatever uh, things they might have, any problems with the child, we do um, like, uh, it's called a developmental screening for make sure that they're doing uh, developmental there at the developmental area that they should be. If they're not, we do uh, first steps referrals so they can get help for their children or any other kind of help that they might have. We try to help all these parents if they have issues with any other things. And here at the Learning Center, I help out uh, as a sub whenever they need me for the children in any room they have here. Um, you said something about like having problems with children, like what sort of problems? Uh, they don't, they're not walking at that age, oh. they're not standing up on their own, they're not talking when they should be talking. It's a milestone mm -hmm. that they should be doing the certain things at an age. Those are the kind of problems. Okay. Um, and I'm curious to know like what percentage of people you work with are U.S. citizens, would you say? <sighs> Very low. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe 20 percent. Mm -hmm. um, do you know about, do you know if any of your clients are like pursuing citizenship or want yes, to be Yes, some citizen? of them are. Mm -hmm. Some of them are. As a matter of fact, one of them already did oh. become a, a, a U.S. citizen. She's out there uh, trying her best to get a job now, get a, 
on her driver license, learn how to drive, and going to school to study English. Awesome. Um, and why do you think that citizenship is important to them? It gives them more. Uh, um, rights, more rights for them to receive, like the uh, driver license, for one example, they can get a driver license, they can even get an ID if they don't have a US citizenship. That same lady, she had a problem because there's at some places there are races with mm -hmm. them, and she went to the other place and she had a better attitude with that person's working at that place. Um, what lang like what languages do you use mo mainly? Spanish with my uh, family that I visit. Mm -hmm. Spanish. Uh, do they do they want to learn English or? Yes. Okay. Yes, like this one that I'm that I'm talking about. She's going to school, and some of them are going to get their GED too. They're trying. Um. Given what you do in your day-to-day -day job, uh, what would you say some of the are some of the challenges that you see the South Bend Latino population facing? Like what's uh, that one that I'm telling you that they're uh, like real racist. The persons that work stores, offices, they're just racist. When uh, the ladies that I visit, her husband went to a store. He got that week. Uh, coupons and they were just like real mean to him they wanted him to buy the milk and I said why are you gonna buy the milk if you have that coupon you should have gone to the office and complained about that because that was not okay for them to make him pay for some milk when he gets the mom gets with coupons for the children mm -hmm. um do you think this that uh, like this racism exists with other uh races in South Bend? Mm, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that, but <laughs> I don't think so. Even as, like I'm Hispanic and I'm Mexican-American, you know, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call me, I'm not going to deny my heritage, but um, people at the gasoline stations, they see me and they start talking to me in Spanish. I think that's racist too, because yeah. I, don't, I don't appreciate that. Just because they see them, um, Mexican American, they automatically think I um, don't know any English. Mm -hmm. That's, I don't <laughs> appreciate mm -hmm. that very much. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so we talked about the challenges such as racism and how does El Campito come in to help them in that regard? Mm, well, our director is bilingual. I'm bilingual. We have a teacher in each room that's bilingual and mm -hmm. the other one is not. But the ones that are not, like Miss Cynthia, she's going to uh, school to get her degree in early childhood from El Campito here, too. Um, okay, cool. Uh, so I know that El Campito serves a large population of people who have migrated to South Bend. Mm -hmm. um, why do you think that they come to South Bend? Why South Bend? Mm. Because there's a lot of, there were right now with our <laughs> whatever's going on, and uh, there were a lot of jobs. I heard that there were a lot of jobs. And that's what the word gets around, and everybody says, yeah, over there in South Bend. And there's Michigan down there that's close to, and a lot of people go over there to do work in the fields, and they was close to South Bend. And, they get familiarized with South Bend. Um, and so how would you describe the typical family that you serve, that like the home visits you go to, how do you describe them? Mm. They are hardworking people. They try their best to, you know, get ahead in some way, like go to school and study English or try to work not just depend on the um, welfare and all those things that are out there to help them. Um, okay. uh, and
and so like what services does El Campito offer to, to the families that you work with? We uh, serve, we do referrals for Christ Child. That's an um, organization that gives clothing for children, that clothes the children in the winter. We also give, uh, when I do the home visits, we take a bed coupon for them. And right now through our PAP program, we're doing a nutrition uh, class upstairs. And we also have a play group at La Casa de Mesa. Mm -hmm. We have a play group so the moms can interact with the children and know how to play games and those kind of things. Um, what ages are served by like the school aspect of El Camino? Uh, walking age through 12th grade after schoolers. Okay. And you said it's like a bilingual atmosphere? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, how would you say that El Campito has grown or changed since you've uh, spent your 11 years here? Mm. With uh, accreditation, there's more um, things that we have to meet and licensing rules that we have to meet. So every uh, director that comes in uh, works on that so that we can do all of that. It's changed a lot. <laughs> yeah. um, do you think like how has the economy affected El Campito's? Um... Uh, no more, not too many children. Yeah. We don't have too many children because the parents, they don't have a, a job and they can bring them here for them to go work and we take care of them here. That's how it has affected them. We yeah. don't have that many children. Um, and yeah, if El Campito like didn't exist or just wasn't here, uh, what do you think the consequences would be? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> the children wouldn't get that much uh, education that they are getting here. They would just be at home or they wouldn't get the developmental area that they need to meet too with parents and teachers program too. We couldn't serve them if we didn't know if they were doing well in those areas. And uh, why do you think that the cognitive development is so important to the Latino community or so necessary? Some of the parents have uh, had other children that are older, but when I give them all this information, they say like, oh my goodness, even though I have older kids and I raised them already, you know, I didn't know all of this information. So it helps when I give them all the information. I give them for cognitive and all of these other things. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so what do you think uh, are some of the challenges that Latino children face in South Bend? Not being able to speak the, the English language, because some of the parents, like when they're older, some of the parents do depend on their children to translate for them whenever they go to the stores, wherever they go. Is a challenge for them not to know that language. Um, and how do you do? You know, like how South Bend Public Schools help kids uh, that are also served by El Campito? Do the public schools do anything? Mm, yes, uh, like we have a bus coming here from Head Start program, which is run by South Bend Schools, and they pick them up here and they take them and then they drop them off here. Also, uh, there are some parents here from El Campito that uh, their moms have to work and then uh, the children are at another school because they live in another area. They don't live in the area here. The moms have to go to a bilingual department and we help them write a letter so they can help them stay here and come here. From here we put them in the bus to schools 
and then they get dropped off here, the parents don't have to worry. They know they're safe here. So that's a great help with Southern schools. Uh, do you, would you make any changes uh, to the school system in regards to Latino youth, or? No. Um, what do you think El Campito's relationship with the community, like with, like the neighborhood is? It's good. Um, our neighbors uh, watch out for our building, make sure that it's safe. One of our teachers that works in the two-year-olds doesn't live very far from here, and she is very well known here in the neighborhood. So if anything would happen to us here, they would be able to call her and let her know. Mm. And she would call us to let them or anything that would happen. Um, we're both American Studies majors, mm -hmm. and in our classes we talk a lot about like the American dream. Mm -hmm. um, so what does that phrase mean to you? What does the American dream mean? <laughs> For me, my dream really did come true to come and work with children. <laughs> that was my dream, to always work with children. And I thank God I did get my dream come true, to come and work here with children. I love my job. Um, do you think it's possible for your clients to achieve the American dream? Yes, my one uh, mom, mm -hmm. she's achieving it. She still needs to work on more stuff that she's working on, like going to study for English. She says it's kind of a challenge, but I say, you keep it up and don't give up. Yes, I know it's hard, but keep up, you know, don't give up. Um, what would you say is like one of the most challenging aspects of your job? Trying to work both things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trying to do, because every time I do a home visit, I have to come and do um, a file for each uh, parent. So sometimes we're short on staff because they get sick or they can't come in. So I am called to come into the learning center and help out, so my files get piled up in the afternoons from my other. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my challenge. Um, would you say that, like, you can kind of find yourself in both worlds, sort of as, like, you, you said you were a Mexican-American woman, um, but at the same time, like, you also do so much work for um, these, like, undocumented, um, families mm -hmm. here. So would you say that like participate in both worlds kind yes, of? Yes, I do. Is that challenging or how does how does that make you feel? No, it makes me feel good because I'm bilingual. Mm -hmm. That's a one. <laughs> it's not challenging for me because mm -hmm. I'm bilingual. Thank God for that. So it's not a challenge. <laughs> um, what would you say, are you familiar with like the immigration process at all? No, no, but my one mom, uh, she was it took a long time for that process. And then she had to leave to Mexico and be on her own without her husband and her children. She just took uh, one of her daughters with her and left the other one behind here with the dad because he had to go to school here. Mm -hmm. So it was really hard for her to be without her husband and her little boy. Um, how has your view of the United States changed over time? Uh, or even since you've started working here? Like, now there's not too much jobs. The economy has been really bad. That's how I see that it's changed because of now this economy that's going on. Um, and what would you say like your personal relationship is with the community? We talked about how El Campito uh, mm -hmm. relates, but what would you say like your role is or um, how you relate to your community? I uh, talk to 
talk to like when we have to go out there and do uh, for anything that I need for my parents I go out there in the community I introduce myself and what I do that way they know who I am and where I am cool. um, and so uh, and like how, how else do you interact uh, with other racial groups in South Bend do you have do you hang out with or do you interact with mostly um, Hispanic people or no I interact with everybody <laughs> with everybody all the culture would you say that there's like racial tension or yes. does that exist <laughs> yes it does yes um, and, uh, what would you say that uh, like one of your biggest fears was? Mm. Just the weather. <laughs> <laughs> my we my fear is the weather down here because even though I've been here for eleven years, it's still getting. I still get nervous driving in the sleet rain in the sleet or not rain or whatever they call it the icy. Mm -hmm. uh, the snow doesn't bother me very much, but it's a challenge for me to because um, when I go to home visits some uh, persons don't really shovel all the snow and I got rheumatoid arthritis I'm just afraid I fall mm -hmm. but I have to do what I have to do that's my job I just be really really careful <laughs> how I walk and you know where I step um, and going back to the home visits you said uh, you do activities mm -hmm. with the families like yes. what what sort of activities would you say like the one I was telling you that the mom said that um, she didn't know she mm -hmm. the baby is starting to crawl and for her to help her out for her to get muscles in her thighs and her upper muscles in her legs she she put the palm of her hand in her heel of her feet of the baby so she can get support the baby and she could be able to get all that um, motor skills so she can be able to crawl. She didn't know that that's how she was supposed to do it. And the baby started crawling. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and do you only work with uh, families with young children? or with No, no, no. So like what activities would you do with, uh, I don't know, a five-year-old or a ten-year-old? Uh, like if they're going to start kindergarten, we also take an activity. So when they need to be prepared, counting the ABCs, their social and emotional, uh, how they should uh, get with other children, as, uh, being able to share things, and their uh, like conflicts, like there's a little uh, paperwork that there's six steps to conflicts that they can resolve. That way when they do go to school, they can be able to do that. But they need to practice, practice, mm -hmm. practice all of this so that children will do it themselves after so many times that they practice it. Um, and this is all usually in Spanish? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, what would you say is uh, one of the most rewarding parts of your job? When the children do well, mm -hmm. that I see that they've done, like that little uh, baby that started crawling. And when they go to school and they did really, really well in their uh, um, being how they given their test before they need to go to kindergarten, that's my <laughs> that I did my job well. Yeah. Um, are are families ever like apprehensive for you to come into their home, or what is their feeling towards you? They like that because we usually make a phone call or we have uh, meetings here too for them. We bring other uh, persons from the community to come and talk to them about different um, things that they are interested in because we have like a little uh, ev evaluation form that they fill out and it asks them what would you like to be, uh, the speaker would come and talk to you about. So mm -hmm. that's how we, but, um, we give them, they might say, well, I want home visits from you. 
So I said, okay, we just get our calendar, and then we call them to make sure it's okay before we go to the visit. But we do a person-to-person -person call. Or sometimes we just call them and say, I'm Lupita from Alcapita with this program, and will you be interested? Or, you know, so, and we introduce ourselves and we just tell them what the program is all about. Um, and so is it, it's like a collaborative effort, right? Mm -hmm. So it's yes. not just you oh, no. instructing? No, 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 no. We and so that usually goes, how does that usually go? We have a parent do the activity with a child. And then we just uh, explain why the activity was important. And uh, the, we talk about the brain development. And... Um, what they should be doing on the next visit when we come back. And when we do go back to the visit, we ask them, how was your visit? What did you do, the follow-up that we asked you? And then they'll say, yes, we did a batch of Play-Doh. It didn't come out so well. <laughs> <laughs> Those things. Um, are you ever met with like uncooperative, it sounds like you're not, but are you ever met with like uncooperative parents or uncooperative children? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, they're the children are the one, and we don't force them. The children, we, we say maybe they'll, they're sleepy, maybe they're hungry, it's not the right time, you know. So, yes, we do. Okay. Um, uh, what else? Uh, how do you like living in South Bend? I like it very much. Besides the weather? Besides the weather, because, uh, what was it about? A year ago, I went to Texas, and then I was almost gonna stay there, but I felt like, even though my family's all over there, I felt like I, I just didn't feel over there really, really like I was gonna be struggling to look for a job again, and what was I gonna do to start all over? And I have my job over here. I guess I feel real secure, and I thank God for this, that I have my job here. And I just wanted to come back. <laughs> yes. Um, do you ever go to visit Mexico? Or? Yes. We, we, where I live is uh, we just go downtown, mm -hmm. and we cross the border, right. and there's Mexico. And so, like, how often do you do that? Every time we go over there. <laughs> and when I came back, they would tell me, you're gonna have trouble coming back because they're getting real strict because of that uh, visa that you had to take out. I have never taken it out. And when I went through the <laughs> people that worked there to come back to uh, the United States, they just told me, oh, you're in, in Indiana now? I said, yeah, because my driver license is from Indiana. And they said, oh, okay. And they just <laughs> let me come <laughs> back. <laughs> Um, and so, does your whole family go when you usually do this? When you usually no, go to only my my sister, my daughter, my son. They go. They love the candies from over there. <laughs> <laughs> my kids. I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> um, <clears throat> how has uh, being a Mexican American like influenced the way you raise your children? Oh, <laughs> it influenced a lot because since I know my. English everywhere, I, since they were babies, everywhere I would take them, everybody speak, spoke English. Mm -hmm. The doctors, the dentists, and they would take them in the room, and I couldn't go with them, so I just started talking to them in English, and now they don't want to speak Spanish. My older son, is, he's 17, he won't talk to you in Spanish. He just talks real funny. <laughs> in Spanish, I just told him, call the neighbor, tell him to come. And his name is Luis, and he said, Luis, mi mamá. And that's all he could tell me, <laughs> that I was calling him, you know. But my daughter, she speaks a little bit more, but now she's getting to that point that she doesn't want to speak Spanish either. And she's starting to sound like she doesn't want to, like, you know, like slang Spanish, mm -hmm. not correctly. Yeah. And so how does, how does that make you feel? It makes me feel like I should have uh, let them speak, that I should have talked to them in Spanish and their English, they would have picked it up later in life. Mm. But. <laughs> um, okay, well, I, I think that's all the questions that I have for you. Is there anything else 
uh, that we didn't talk about that you want to add or talk about? Or?